An Indiana soldier sent to Afghanistan lived through a harrowing experience that most soldiers will never encounter. Now, this wasn't a surprise enemy attack that threatened her life, but instead the unexpected birth of a child in combat. Now we look back at our investigation from 2017 when she spoke to 13 News for the very first time talking about a deployment mistake that put two lives at risk. You know those big helicopters, those black ones? Yeah, basically I was supposed to be a door gunner. Life as a soldier, a dream come true for Ashley Shelton. In 2012, after basic training and ammunition school, orders came for the then 20-year-old to deploy to Afghanistan. She was assigned to the 12th Combat Aviation Brigade, a Black Hawk helicopter unit. But 30 days before she was to ship out, an unexpected twist. Females are supposed to have a pregnancy test done prior to deployment. Mine showed up positive when one showed up negative and then one was indecisive. And so that's where they took my blood and they sent it off to London. The blood test was supposed to determine if Ashley would deploy or not. When word came to pack her bags, she did. By the time they got the blood test back, I was already deployed to Afghanistan. Had no signs of being pregnant. So they didn't wait? No. She says her pregnancy tests were eventually deemed false positives and she had no reason to doubt it. As part of her deployment, medical records also show Ashley received malaria pills as well as anthrax and typhoid vaccinations. We basically go in there, roll up our sleeves and just get stuck. For three months, she worked in the combat zone in Shindad. Physical training and restrictive wear, all part of her routine. Well, I got sick there in Afghanistan, but I blamed it on the food. Then came the morning of August 15th. I kept cramping and cramping and cramping. A trip to the aid station resulted in fluids and orders for bed rest. Walking back to my tent and my water broke. I thought I've never been in labor. I've never had a kid before. So I literally thought I kind of uh, urinated on myself. She and a battle buddy made it to the restroom. What happened next shocked Ashley and the United States Army. I thought that I was dying and I could not physically move because it was in I was in dire pain. I'll never forget this. They told me to stand up. My son just came out. Ashley had been eight months pregnant. These photos show her five pound baby boy in the hands of an army medic. Did you realize at that point that you had given birth? Remind you, I was in Afghanistan in the middle of a combat zone. Ashley and her son were flown to Germany and hospitalized. She says that's when the shock became a secret. Everyone had to keep it quiet. And then finally, Stars and Stripes came out with something. Stars and Stripes is a military publication, but nothing in the mainstream media about Ashley and the birth of baby Benjamin. Ben is now five years old. Yeah! And he lives with birth defects. He doesn't walk normally. His medical records show he had a small knot in his lower left leg at birth and was exposed to anthrax and other vaccinations. Doctors warned then he could suffer from congenital birth defects. I just want answers. They clearly had the blood test. If you knew I was pregnant, why did you not pull me back? Ashley says despite the Army's internal investigation, it's still unclear how she and Ben ended up in Afghanistan. For now, all she has is Ben's birth certificate and his medical records as proof. Born in Shinde in Afghanistan on October 15, 2012. She hopes the U.S. Army will recognize Ben and the critical mistake that led to a soldier giving birth in combat. 13 investigates reached out to the Army and the Pentagon to find out what went wrong. We're still waiting for information. An Army spokeswoman in Europe says the only thing on file there is a Stars and Stripes article. In that report, the birth is confirmed and a review was conducted of the pre-deployment clinic. Now, unfortunately, like many veterans, Ashley is struggling with post-deployment issues. Life is an adventure for this little fighter. Yeah! But Benjamin has no idea what he survived five years ago. He was born in combat in the mountains of Afghanistan. I fell through the cracks. Ashley Shelton is Benjamin's mother. Her unexpected delivery came with no alert of a pregnancy, no preparation for motherhood, and no prenatal care. I was downrange for four months, possibly. My son's eight months along when he was born. It doesn't make sense. 
It doesn't make sense because Ashley took the pregnancy test as required by Army protocol. She says when one came back positive and another negative, a blood test was taken to decide if she would deploy or stay home. But somehow Ashley ended up with the 12th Combat Aviation Brigade in her second trimester, surrounded by heavy fuels and chemicals from the Black Hawk helicopters in use. Yeah. Along the way, she and her son Benjamin were exposed to anthrax and typhoid vaccines, among other meds. They gave us malaria pills, which you're not supposed to take when you're pregnant. No one can say for certain how Ashley's pregnancy in combat impacted Benjamin. Hey, mama. But there's no question they both need help. He does struggle with, you know, walking and he does have a lower speech level than normal. In medical records, army doctors warn Benjamin could suffer from congenital birth defects. His foot is his most noticeable disability. What he lacks physically, he makes up in determination. His spirit without limits. But Ashley knows her baby, born in combat, will need help combating adverse health issues that threaten the quality of his life. What is the military doing about this? Nothing. It's completely erased. Ashley says she's anxious about the future and, like so many other soldiers, has bouts with PTSD and depression. I'm not going to say I'm the best. I'm not really how I used to be. I do. I am stressed out a lot. I'm trying to slowly move forward. While she's addressing her own challenges, Benjamin is now in the care of family. A soldier and her son, failed once by a military deployment mistake, now left to fight health battles of their own. Family members are working to get Benjamin the attention he needs for his foot as Ashley continues to work to get on her feet. It was a battle. Thousands of miles away from Afghanistan in the 12th Aviation Brigade, Private Ashley Shelton has been stuck in another military fight. The right to know why Army doctors sent her into a war zone pregnant. Second trimester pregnant. Just three months after she was deployed, she went into labor in a latrine and delivered a near full-term five-pound baby boy. And to this day, the Army has not provided anything as far as an investigation, nope. what their findings are, anything. So we're still waiting. Yep. Despite the Army's lack of response, Shelton and 13 investigates have obtained explosive new medical records that reveal what really happened and why she and her unborn baby were sent into harm's way. The records reveal the then 20-year-old was sent into combat despite four positive pregnancy tests over a nine-week period starting in February 2012. The last test in April, just weeks before she shipped out in May. Everything shows I was pregnant. Science proves I was pregnant. The Army doctor writes she has no signs of pregnancy. She continues to have positive HCG testing despite not being pregnant. HCG is a hormone produced during pregnancy and is picked up at very low levels by standard pregnancy tests. But in Shelton's case, it wasn't enough. The records note Shelton was on birth control and reported her last sexual encounter during leave. He's in there saying that you're not pregnant. You're trusting his advice. In fact, the doctor lists Shelton as deployable, noting abnormal findings and calling her a very interesting case. He then writes this shocking phrase, do not feel patient is actually pregnant. Human anti-mouse antibodies are causing a false positive result. Since going home on leave to rural Indiana in December, where she lives on a farm and reports frequently seeing mice, she has had positive HCGs, despite not being pregnant. That's right. The doctor's decision to send Shelton into combat was not based on additional testing or an ultrasound, but on her perceived exposure to mice in Indiana. Does that make any sense to you? No, I really had no contact with mice. Whether she believed it or not, she was a soldier under the Army's command. The doctor sent a blood test out to a lab in London, ordered typhoid and anthrax vaccines for Shelton, but held her off from the smallpox shot due to inability to 100% disprove pregnancy. Now, five years later, and watching her son deal with developmental delays and a physical disability. As a woman, I'm reading it and I'm like, why? Like, why? 
you know, like, why did you deploy me? It's a question 13 Investigates has been asking for months. We want answers from the doctor who made the call, Dr. Jonathan Richard Coyle. Shelton found him on social media. That's him. Yep. Major Coyle, the one who okayed me to deploy, he has not responded to any of my messages. He did not feel that you were pregnant. On off his feelings, I could have died, my son could have died. Shelton wants both Dr. Coyle and the Army to consider the future for Benjamin. Where do I go from this point on? You know, where does my son go? You've seen the test. One signals you're pregnant, the other one you're not. All based on hormone levels. Private Ashley Shelton just got her military pregnancy test. Medical records show multiple positive urine tests over a nine-week period. But an Army doctor in charge of her deployment dismissed the results and sent her into a war zone. Three months later, she gave birth to a baby boy. How was her pregnancy missed? 13 Investigates asked Dr. James Perry, a longtime obstetrician and gynecologist, about diagnosing pregnancy from the mundane to the more complicated. Dr. Perry has never met or examined Shelton and cannot say what was or wasn't appropriate in her care. But speaking from his own experience, Dr. Perry says high levels of HCG, the hormone unique to early pregnancy, is generally a first indicator. The HCG level in the early pregnancy is going to double roughly every 50 to 55 hours. So it's going to increase exponentially. That's exactly what happened in Private Shelton's case. But according to medical records, Shelton was on birth control and her monthly cycle was light. Things don't always uh, read the textbook. Perry says if there is doubt, even with high HCG levels, a blood test can provide an even more accurate screening. In Shelton's case, the blood sample taken just weeks before she shipped out came back positive too. But medical records show the Army doctor was convinced Shelton was exposed to mice in Indiana, and that created a false positive. Dr. Perry says he's not aware of any false positives involving mice. Everyone is a little different, and, and there is, um, you know, they're, they're, uh, in the scope of human variation, there are uh, there are going to be outliers to all of these. There are going to be unusual cases. Still, he says there are proven yeah, methods sure, to sure determine sure. pregnancy. There's blood tests, there's ultrasound, there's, uh, and, and it's not a static situation. It's going to declare itself eventually. In Shelton's case, it became real in the middle of a war zone. 13 investigates reached out to the doctor who actually made the call. He did not respond, so we set out to find him, tracking his work from the mountains of Afghanistan to the western base of the Rockies. Why? Like, why? You know, like, why did you deploy me? Private Ashley Shelton was sent into a war zone pregnant and delivered a five-pound baby boy in 2012 with no forewarning and no prenatal care. I was working around, like, chemicals that were hazardous. Now her five-year-old son lives yeah. with disabilities. The only person who can say why Shelton was sent to Afghanistan despite five positive pregnancy tests is this man. But Dr. Jonathan Richard Coyle isn't talking publicly. I was pregnant, but he still said I was not pregnant. Shelton believes the U.S. Army is covering up by refusing to say how Dr. Coyle could blame exposure to mice in Indiana for five positive pregnancy tests. An Army spokesman previously confirmed there was an internal review saying appropriate action had been taken. But the Army won't say if Dr. Coyle was disciplined. Records show he deployed to Afghanistan in April 2012, the same month he ruled Shelton deployable. He left two months after Shelton gave birth. He really had no clue. Yeah. We wanted to ask Coyle about Shelton's deployment, but trying to find him took us across the country. According to the Army, the 12th Aviation Brigade surgeon was sent back to Germany and then to an Army clinic in Fort Stewart, Georgia, before leaving the service in 2016. He then went to work at the Wynn Army Community Hospital in Georgia before taking his doctor's license west along I-70 into the Rocky Mountains, with all signs pointing towards Grand Junction, Colorado. We followed his trail to the Grand Junction VA Medical Center, where he worked as a fill-in emergency room doctor. He does work here on occasion, yes. Is he here today? He's not. Okay. Do you know when he'll be back? 
I don't. One of his friends told 13 Investigates he was on vacation out of the country. Dr. Coyle's troubles not only follow him from the mountains of Afghanistan, but 13 Investigates has learned as a result of our inquiries, his status as a doctor is now in question too here in Colorado. It started when we checked his medical license with the state of Colorado. No records found. Under Colorado state law, doctors, including those on fill-in status, are required to obtain and hold a license as a physician in that state. It goes for military doctors, too, unless they are commissioned, working under military orders. Colorado also works with the Interstate Medical Licensure Compact to help doctors who work state to state get screened and licensed faster. Still, the state of Colorado reports there are no public documents or records for licensure for Jonathan Richard Coyle, nor has he applied for any. So how is Dr. Coyle working in the ER of the VA? A controversial VA policy allows doctors with a valid license from any state to work in VA facilities across the country. Dr. Coyle has an active license in Nebraska, but hasn't worked in Nebraska for years. Critics of the VA policy worry about inadequate background checks. The Grand Junction VA refused to answer questions about its verification standards and told 13 investigates Dr. Coyle was hired as a contractor through a staffing agency. But one of those staffing agencies, A-Team Solutions, says Dr. Coyle is not one of its doctors. The company says it does require a three-month verification process. Another staffing agency did not answer our questions about Dr. Coyle. My son is suffering. No one's looking out for him. No one's looking out for me. He's getting taken care of. Days after we started asking questions, the Grand Junction VA decided to end its relationship with Dr. Coyle, saying the VAMC no longer uses Dr. Coyle's services. But the VA would not say why it took action. I was tested numerous times. In a letter and in her own words, Ashley Shelton explains why she wants the former Army doctor who cleared her for combat investigated by the state of Nebraska and its Board of Medicine. Major Coyle was the doctor. Dr. Jonathan Richard Coyle is the doctor who sent Shelton into combat despite multiple positive pregnancy tests. He worked for the Army under this Nebraska medical license issued in 2006. Before Shelton deployed to Afghanistan in 2012, she says she was told she had conflicting pregnancy tests. It wasn't until months after 13 investigates exposed the Army's secret about Shelton giving birth in combat that a portion of Shelton's records were released to her. Those records revealed something very disturbing and different from what she was told. Five positive pregnancy tests, one of them a blood test showing her HCG or pregnancy hormone levels over 58,000, well above the level where doctors would suspect a pregnancy. Coyle dismissed the positive pregnancy test, saying Shelton's exposure to mice in Indiana could have caused false positive results. How can a medical doctor of this degree justify deploying a person who has 58441.00 HCG. Medical experts tell 13 investigates high HCG levels could indicate pregnancy or worse yet, cancer. They did not test me for cancer at all. A sixth pregnancy test was sent to a London lab for analysis, but Shelton never received those results. Still, Dr. Coyle ruled Shelton deployable and sent her to Afghanistan. Is there any reason why he would be motivated to send you into battle. I went to school for hazardous materials. I was the only one who went to school for that in like pretty much my whole entire b battalion. I was mission essential. Was I just a number or was I a human being? Shelton hopes an investigation by the Nebraska Board of Medicine will force Dr. Coyle to answer questions he's refused to address, including her London test results and why she wasn't pulled back from the war zone to get the medical care she and her son deserved. A team of medical doctors at a hospital that was around that was sanitary and, you know, they're used to delivering children, not in a bathroom. 
in Afghanistan. We are still awaiting records from the Army to learn what, if any, action was taken regarding Ashley Shelton's deployment decision. We're also expecting to hear from the Grand Junction VA Medical Center, where we discovered Coyle working until late April. Now, Dr. Coyle was terminated by the VA, but no one will say why. Away from Army ranks and miles from Indiana, this former soldier is stepping forward. Because it's time people understand. She's talking to 13 investigates about what happened to a comrade who was sent into combat pregnant, despite five positive pregnancy tests. Hannah, who asked us to use only her first name, worked alongside Private Ashley Shelton. We were in same battalion, same company, and same platoon. Documents and photos show their connected military careers. Both women were supposed to deploy to Afghanistan in 2012. Both had multiple positive pregnancy tests months before. I just was scared because I'd seen other girls losing their babies, two or three in our company alone. Hannah says, like Ashley, her first positive pregnancy tests were deemed false positives. She says clinic doctors blamed high HCG pregnancy hormone levels on an earlier miscarriage. I called BS and I kept pushing it. I had to push it myself. Hannah says her tests were sent off to a lab. While awaiting results, she continued to work in the motor pool, getting vehicles and fuel ready for the war zone. And it took them over a month over a month to tell me that I was actually pregnant. Until it was confirmed, like hardcore confirmed, they didn't care. She says a commander gave her a desk job until she got her pregnancy profile status. That's an army determination restricting a soldier from hard physical training, heavy lifting, harsh chemicals, and deployment. Eventually, she was assigned to the rear detachment unit, where soldiers who cannot deploy are sent. There was about nine or 10 girls on rare D for pregnancy with me. At the time, Hannah and Private Shelton were at odds and not speaking. Hannah says there were rumors Shelton was pregnant, but no one believed it. She had no idea her one-time friend was getting deployed despite five positive pregnancy tests. So she didn't look pregnant. While Hannah was going to prenatal classes, Private Shelton was being told there was no baby by Army Dr. Jonathan Richard Coyle. In explosive medical records obtained by 13 investigates, Coyle, a flight doctor, said he did not feel Shelton was actually pregnant and that human anti-mouse antibodies caused a false positive result. Dr. Coyle sent blood work out to a lab and cleared her for combat. By the time they got the blood test back, I was already deployed to Afghanistan. So they didn't wait? No. So she didn't get what you got, and it's unfair. Hannah gave birth to a healthy baby girl in Germany. A month later, Shelton gave birth in a latrine to a near full-term baby boy in a war zone. And then all of a sudden, we get told, yeah, Shelton's on her way home. She had a baby downrange. No, 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 that's not right. There, there's no way that could have happened. Hannah says the Army went silent. Now, six home. years later, after seeing our 13 investigates reports online, Hannah knows what really happened and is outraged. In my book, there's no excuse for it. She believes part of the problem is the Army culture towards pregnant soldiers. Great annoyance. I think it was because they didn't have enough room in headquarters to move all the pregnant women. She still can't wrap her mind around a doctor sending a 20-year-old pregnant woman into combat. That is the worst place for them to think it was acceptable to send a pregnant woman. He shouldn't have been allowed to do that, and she shouldn't have gone through that hell. We first introduced you to Ashley Shelton in November of 2017. We came here to Frankfurt, where Ashley told us an unbelievable story. Ashley Shelton survived the unthinkable. In 2012, she was deployed to Afghanistan despite five positive pregnancy tests. Last May, new medical records obtained by Shelton and 13 investigates revealed an Army flight doctor shipped her out claiming she had false positive results due to exposure to mice. Three months into deployment, Shelton gave birth to a near full-term baby boy in a latrine in the combat zone. But back in Indiana, on the other side of the battle, life may have taken its toll. 
the 27-year-old former soldier was found dead in her car on Saturday night outside a Frankfurt hotel. She had gone there to meet and swim with her mother and six-year-old son, Benjamin. Police say Shelton was in her car seat, reclining, unconscious. The Clinton County Chief Deputy Coroner says there is nothing suspicious and no foul play involved in Shelton's death. The office is awaiting additional autopsy results. Shelton had openly told 13 investigates she struggled with PTSD, depression, and other issues common to soldiers with wartime traumas. Still, she wanted answers for her son and to build a life for him. She left the Indiana Army National Guard last year on full disability. The doctor who sent her into combat was questioned by medical licensing investigators in Nebraska, where he is licensed to practice, but no disciplinary action was taken. Ashley Shelton's death comes as a surprise to all who knew her. There are still so many questions. At the same time, the U.S. Army has never responded as to how this young lady ended up giving birth in combat. In Frankfurt, I'm Sandra Chapman with 13 Investigates.